This is Freddy Frogs, a certified Ableton trainer. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a mixing technique we developed here in the classroom at Point Blank with the students. One of the most critical aspects of mixing a track consists in separating the elements in the mix so that we can clearly hear every part of this composition from the beginning till the end of the structure. So, in most cases, this is a quite straightforward technique, but some elements will be clashing more than others because they're sharing too many frequencies and they're working on the same area of the frequency range. So, this technique is referred to as the relative EQing, where some frequencies are boosted on one element and nudged from the other element. So let me run you through this track. It's a, a jam session we had with the band the other day. It's not a fully produced track, but I want to clear it out so I can play it back to the band on the next rehearsal to see if we actually want to develop this into a finished composition. So let me just run you through the track here. Set of drums here, electronics, sample bass, acoustic guitar, and all these elements are working nicely with each other. The vocal is also cutting through nicely. So I'm going to hit the bridge here. The sax is also cutting through nicely, no problem here. However, the keys here are creeping into the mix with the volume automation. And these are playing rather low in the range and they might be, I feel, clashing with the bass. And so far I can hear them kind of clearly and that's it when they come in on top of the bass they are conflicting with the bass line listen to these two elements together there's definitely some masking occurring here so I'm gonna load an EQ onto both these tracks EQ8 is obviously our favorite EQ in terms of mixing here in Ableton Live and I'm going to load the same EQ onto the bass. Now one issue in Ableton Live is that we cannot visualize these two EQs simultaneously. We can only see one at a time. We don't have floating windows and that's an issue. So we thought how about we go and create a Max for Live device to EQ these two tracks simultaneously. If you open your Max for Live tab you'll find multimap. So just type it into your browser here and there it is, multimap. So this multimap object will let you map eight parameters within Ableton Live and across the platform to this single dial here. So this is not exactly what I want. I'm going to show you how to edit this patch to your needs. It's pretty straightforward. Let's open the max patch using this button here and let's go into patching mode and then freeze it so we can edit it. So what I actually need is three of these dials. So let's copy and paste them twice. So we can have three dials identical. All I need to do is reassign, re-patch these mapping objects here. So let's just delete these cables here and re-enable them to our needs. Just grab the output here into this input of this object, the inlet of this object. That's it. It's really straightforward. You can see nothing too difficult about this and it's going to have a tremendous effect to our mixing technique here. Let's have a look. That's it. I've done it. Let's go back into presentation mode and reorganize these objects on the screen so that it's nice and tidy like so. Oopsie. Right there. That's it. Now I can close the patch, save it. I'm going to call it uh, relative EQ. Like so. I didn't spell it properly. There we are. That's it. Now the patch looks like this. Exactly how I patched it within Max. What I've got to do now is map these three buttons. I want to control the frequency, the gain, and the Q. Let me move the max object to the other track and redo the same exact mapping to this other EQ right there. One final tweak. 
I need to reverse the range of one of the gains. So when I boost one of the gain, it nudges it. It removes the frequency from the other sound like so. So I just have to, you see, invert the range here. That's it. Look. Now when I boost here, it's actually nudging on the other one fantastic and as I move it across the frequency to sweep and find the spot I would like to tweak it's also moving it onto the other patch let's just move it up there and you can see it's now moved up there here too fantastic isn't it now I can narrow the cue or widen the cue I can lower the frequency lower the boost let's now EQ these two against each other so in fact in this very case I think I want to remove frequencies from the bass to let the actual organ cut through a little too much of a boost here, unnatural. There. There, it's fine. I'm not going to boost it as much to keep the elements quite natural. And I think this is how I want it. See, I've boosted certain frequencies onto the organ and nudged them out of the bass at once. it I can clearly hear the keys now so you can download this project as well as the max for life patch I just created for you but you see there's nothing difficult in editing a max for life patch to your needs so if you enjoyed this tutorial come and join us here at point blank in the classroom to learn more of these unique techniques <laughs>